compromising in gospel that even though some may learn more about thee and then know that Brother Coleman has gone on to a land that yet to be discovered, we who are left behind, let us look forward to seeing him in that great getting up morning. Oh, have mercy this morning, oh God. If he lead and God, oh God, we know we'll be led by one who knows all and sees all. Yes, yes. Oh, bless us, oh God. Bless, bless us, oh God. This occasion, oh God, is coming for me. Coming for all of us who have confessed our hope in Christ. Yes. Bless us, oh God. And we so be so proud to give you all the praise yes. and all the glory. In your name we do pray. Thank God and amen. Church, say amen. amen. We now listen to the acknowledgement and the resolutions and cards. And I have an apology for the family. The resolution, I left it at home. So uh, if we have one, that uh, we may have one that's here. And so... If so, we will read it, but if not, uh, my apologies, and we will get it to you on a later date. And then after that, we're going to have the uh, words of reflection. No, I'm sorry. After that, well, I, I just skipped the musical selection. Musical selection, first of all, by Clara Hardeman, safe in his arms, and then the acknowledgement and resolutions. Amen? Amen. And I'll come back for the words of reflection.
Good morning. Good morning. The family of Linwood Coleman wishes to express heartfelt appreciation for the many acts of kindness, prayers, love, and sympathy extended to us during our time of bereavement. Words can never express our sense of gratitude, and for this we are eternally grateful. To all of you and to New Spirit Baptist Church, God bless each of you. We have many cards, and I will select from the many cards uh, that uh, the family would like to share with you. We are thinking of you. There are times when the right words just don't exist. We hope it will help you a little to know how much we are thinking of you how much we care. I'm so sorry for your loss, Mr. Coleman, was a joyful man and always had a good story to tell me. I know he loves his ice cream, black cherry, walnut. He will be gratefully missed. My thoughts and prayers are with you all. This is love from Charlotte and Alex. With caring sympathy in the loss of your husband, but now abide faith, hope, love, these three. But the greatest of these is love, 1 Corinthians 13, 13. May the warm memories from the legacy of your love be a source of comfort and strength in the days ahead. And may God's forever love embrace your heart with the peace and healing he alone can bring. Resolution. 
St. Reed Missionary Baptist Church, 656 East 79th Street in Los Angeles. Pastor Dr. C.R. Jones. This resolution for Brother Linwood Coleman. To the Coleman family, it is with sincere love and humble submission that we, the pastor and members of St. Reed Missionary Baptist Church, submit this letter of resolution on behalf of our members, Deacon Emmett Coleman, Sister Jenny Coleman Buchanan, as well as the Johnson and Henderson families. To the families and friends, we say that God, our Father, shares your sorrow. He understands the pain you feel. He can handle your anger, hurt, and disappointment. He knows your distress more than anyone ever could. He may feel far away, and you may feel abandoned, but he is with you even during this time. And know God will wipe away every tear from your eyes. God loves you and wants to be your source of strength during this difficult time. His hand guides and sustains us in the darkest hours. The prophet Jeremiah observed in Lamentations 3 and 3, God may bring us sorrow, but his love for us is sure and strong. May the divine comforter bring peace and solace to your hearts through the days ahead. A copy of this resolution be kept on records of St. Reed Missionary Baptist Church and a copy will be given to the family. Respectfully and prayerfully yours, Reverend Reed, uh, uh, Pastor Dr. C.R. Jones, Sister Brenda Cohen, Secretary Clerk. Well, it's now time for to share from your hearts and reflect upon the times that you shared with uh, Mr. Linwood Coleman. Amen. Amen. I'm just going to tell you now, you can't tell it all. all right. I know you have a lot of memories. You lived a long life and you did a lot of things together. But you ain't going to get up here and talk about all of them, okay? All right. All right. You're going to make me get you. That's what you're going to do. But if you can pull out a memory, a time shared, and share that with us, we'll, we will be grateful. Now, y'all know you can't read a book in two minutes. So you're not going to be able to tell it in two minutes. So just pull out a paragraph of memory and share it with us, and we will be greatly appreciative. We're going to ask the family to come and then friends and associates to follow them to come and share from their hearts during the life of Linwood Coleman. Amen. Amen. Good morning. My name is D. Worthy, and I would like to share on behalf of the Worthy family, I wanted to just come up and say this, that uh, Auntie, to the family and friends, to this amazing celebration for my uncle, who was simply one of a kind. Yes. He was someone that if you knocked on his door, the welcoming would be totally remiss. It would be welcoming, it would be good, it would be exciting because he's gonna start getting you to laugh and he's gonna tickle you with his humor. And, but more importantly, what I got from my uncle, which I will rejoice it to the day I leave here, is know God, know his word, know his word within yourself. He walked his life godly, anointingly, he displayed it in any encounter 
you had with him. He stood up. He laughed. He kept us joyful. But I want you to know, as a family, we pray together. We stay together. I honor his legacy by just carrying that within me. And we'll rejoice that till we have our day in that glory. And I give God all the praise and glory. Amen. 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 Mm -hmm. Given praise to my Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, Pastor, Pastor Jones, church, family, and friends. This is a sad occasion for me, but we don't want to make it sad. We want to make it a happy occasion. I love you. I love you, Sister Sloan. I love you. But so since the uh, pastor said only two minutes, I could I can talk, but I, I'm going to cut it short. I, I want to. I have a poem that I, I um, <laughs> that I put together here, and I want the church to hear it in the family. We've, we've, I am the baby brother. My name is Joe Willie Coleman. All right. This is all, this is my smart niece here. She's, <laughs> she, she wants to me to announce who I am. But we've lost a limb from the tree. So I want to say this little poem that I really love. I keep this voice, I, uh, the family tree, I keep hearing a voice that says, grieve not for me. Remember the best times, the laughter, the song, the good life I live while I was strong. Continue my heritage. I'm counting on you. Keep smiling and surely the sun will shine through. My mind is at ease, my soul is at rest. Remembering all, now I truly was blessed. Yes. Continue traditions, no matter how small. Go on with your life. Don't worry about the falls. I miss you all dearly, so keep your chin up until the day we're together again. Thank you. Thank you. Pastor Clark, my pastor, Pastor Joan from St. Reed Missionary Baptist Church. I'm um, here to uh, just say a few words to the immediate family. Dora, the wife, Gerald and uh, Wanda, and the uh, grands and great grands. I just want to say a few words because Linwood was a special person. He was a uh, one of my uh, special brothers. Hello? Hello? Right here? And uh, just want to uh, talk about a few memories. He was, uh, as they say, he was kind of comical. He liked to, <laughs> he liked to uh, tell jokes, but he was a great brother. And uh, I loved him very much. And I just want... Uh, the family to know that they should uh, just keep the memories of him alive and know that he loved you. And he's at peace now. So just rest in that. Hello, everyone. Hello. Pastor, the pulpit, visiting friends, and to the family. My name is Larry Coleman. I'm the eighth of 13 kids. I didn't know my brother growing up, but once I came to California where he was, it was something special because he was the type of person that kept you laughing, you know? <laughs> you know, every, anybody that's known that knew Linwood knew that he was the life of the party. I love my brother. You know, he had his his faults is like everybody else, and he, but he was a good man. You know, he was a good man. One thing I remember about my brother Linwood was uh, he, uh, he didn't, well, 
if you borrowed some money from him, you owed him something. You know what I mean? <laughs> he says, he'll tell you, you only got one time to mess up. That's right. you know, he says, your word is your bond. Yes. If, your, if your word is no good, yes, then you're no good. <laughs> but Brother Coleman, rest in peace. We love you. We all love you, but God loves you the best. Yeah. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Everyone. Good morning. My name is Jimmy Coleman, and I'm the tenth child in the family. And the baby girl that's living now. The baby girl living. And I'm going to uh, recite a poem as well. Uh, I have to get my glasses out so I can see. <laughs> That's right. Okay. Okay, my poem is entitled, uh, In Memory of a Wonderful Brother Named Linwood. I hold on to our memories, the ones that are so dear, to try to keep you always close. Now that you are not here, you were called. It was your time. But it is so true that you have left a legacy. There was no one like you. You were very special. And I want to say, I feel lost in many ways. You are not here today. But I will never forget you. And I know I have been blessed to have you as my brother, because you were the best, Linwood Coleman. Thank you, everyone. Well, <laughs> I guess I gotta <laughs> say uh, thank God for everyone. Thank God for the pastors, people, my family, where do I start this? <laughs> my reflections on my uncle. First of all, he loved the Lord. He told me eight days a week. He said, eight days a week. I said, oh, eight days a week? He said, yeah, there's eight day, seven days in a week, and I give one to the Lord. OK, he loved my auntie. They were together for 68, almost 69 years. My name is Ernie Worthy. My brother spoke earlier. It's, it's six of us. And uh, my, you know, I remember coming to Orange County and I asked, I wanted to get out of LA County and I wanted to go work somewhere else. He said, yeah, brother Ernie, just every, everybody was brother and sister to him. And he said, uh, he said, yeah, brother Ernie, come on down. He said, I'm going to treat you like I'm doing my kids, too. He said, uh, it's not rent. I stayed with him for a year. He said, it's not rent, but it's, uh, it's called paying your way. Twelve fifty a week, OK? <laughs> I said, no. I said, we can't do this. <laughs> I'll give you a little more. But he was always, uh, and Unc was kind of quiet, but when he got his way, we all would have round table, which I never did have that at my family, but we were still close. So we sit and talk. And I remember him saying, self-preservation is the law of the land. Charity starts at home and then spreads about. He said, I'm talking about self. You got to be with self first, and then you spread it around. We always talked about finances. He loved the family. He loved friends. And uh, my father used to call the place the rescue mission because <laughs> everybody would come through. Yeah, and he always gave me good, solid advice. And he was not only an uncle, he was a father to me as well. And uh, he loved working in the yard. And uh, we told quite a few jokes together. Because <laughs> that's, that's what he did. But I'm not going to talk long, because I can go on and on and on. Like the pastor said, you only got two minutes. So... Uh, I used to be a coach, and I love chants. So if you guys would follow me, uh, all you need to do is just say, oh, yeah. 
you know, clap, or whatever. It starts off like this. It takes a rocking chair to rock. It takes a football to roll. It takes a team like LC to satisfy your soul. Then we went to the east. Then we went to the west. I saw it was LC. I said, he is the best. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Thank you. Love you. Um, I'm Rashad Jones, I'm his first grandson. Damn, I said I wasn't gonna cry. <laughs> um, I'm not sad. I, I, I'm gonna miss him. Uh, he was a father figure to me. Um, I can go back to when I was a child. Of one of the first things he had gray, and I always used to ask him, you know, what's why your hair gray? <laughs> And he told me uh, that was wisdom. <laughs> I cried that I, to this day. <laughs> and now I'm great, so I'm smart too. <laughs> yeah, that's what I'm saying. Keep on getting up and down, you'll see. Uh, yeah, he, he, was a, he was a wise man. He was a father figure to me. Um, I love my grandfather. He taught me how to be a man. And, and to be a, a father to my family and um, uh, to my wife. That's my wife, Sierra, right here. And um, like I said, man, I'm just going to miss him. He was an excellent man. He left a legacy, homeowner, responsible, funny. Um, give it to you straight. Don't really care how you feel about it. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. excuse your feelings. <laughs> And uh, I just love him. I love you, Grandma. I'm here for you. Love you, Uncle Joe. Mom, sisters, auntie. All right, thank you. How y'all doing? I'm Sierra. He told you I was his wife. <laughs> um, I'm going to say something because definitely met this man. He was awesome. He poked at me a lot about my hair, y'all. But I have to tell him, I can't fly, and I know you loved it, so that's why you poked at me. But anyway, I come because I'm a New Orleans native, Louisiana native, and I felt like I had to say something. I wish that I had more time with him. I, I did feel the love, and I did feel the joy when I was with him. And I want to say I love you guys. You know, I'm giving all my love, all my hugs to you guys, and um, I'm going to definitely miss this man. Good, good morning to all of you that are here. It's a blessing to be in the house of the Lord on this type of occasion. We don't like these occasions. I know, but I know these kind of occasions are going to come. If you're born in this world, my brother said, you're going to leave here ready or not. And, uh, I'm the oldest male Corbin, I think, that's alive right now, the best I, to my knowledge. But I thought about something to do. My brother, when I first came to California in late 1959, I lived with him for possibly a year. I had my wedding reception at their home. And uh, we had a lot of fun memories because, uh, like this other just said, he's the type of brother that kept you laughing, always had something positive to say to you. And I say, I know my time is up, right up, but I, I thought about this style of life is like an old ship. It has landed many a thousand. Yeah. Yeah. It landed my mother, yes. it landed my father. Mm -hmm. And now, mm -hmm. oh, have mercy, it has landed my father, my brother. But I thank God 
that I believe? Yes, sir. Mm. Yes, sir. Yeah. Yes, Lord. To the depths of my soul, mm -hmm. that he was a Christian brother, yeah. not only biological, mm -hmm. but in the Lord. In the Lord, he he and I used to sing hymns, and we got laid over in life, and I'd call and and we had that some song. We did some oh, I call him Doctor Watts. Oh, him would sing. He the hum one, mm -hmm. and I said, oh, I know what you're talking about. Because uh, we had that type of relationship. Yes. And my brother, oh, I could settle. We, we even live across from each other later on in life. Mm -hmm. He lived at 8030. I live, I think, 8030, something like that. But across the way from him. Mm -hmm. But it was a good life. He always would help me if I needed to. And he counseled me. Yes. Mm -hmm. That was good. That was good. Help me and my wife. When we were in our younger days, we had a little squabbles. Oh yeah, he here and he come over. He kind of would uh, resolve those situations. Mm -hmm. And God bless his soul. We uh, he's gone on. Sleep on. Yeah, yeah. Amen. Oh Lord, oh Lord, oh Lord. Sleep on, my brother. Amen. And take your rest. Yes. We all love you, mm -hmm. but my God love you best. Yeah. God. Amen. Good morning, Pastor. Good morning, Paul. Good morning. Thank Good you. Morning. Hi, everybody. My name is Joy. I'm his oldest granddaughter. He's pretty much my dad. Mm -hmm. As my brother said, he raised me. And as you guys are telling certain stories and how my grandparents had a rescue mission, I'm their biggest person they rescued. Mm -hmm. Do you guys know, you've talked to my grandparents, they have always said, hope, Joy's down there somewhere, or mm. you know, here and there. Mm. I've always been there for my grandparents because they've been there for me, they've raised me. My grandpa's taught me so many lessons, but the best ones are the ones you just don't understand. Mm. All his into windows, they just don't make any sense. Mm. Oh, you'll get that on tomorrow. What you doing other than nothing? Mm. Come on, help me out. Climb up this tree, get these oranges. It goes on and on. Thank you for always being there for me, having my back. And thank you for the biggest blessing you just gave me of allowing me to come home one more time. My grandpa left the day that I moved out. I take that as a sign as he knew I was ready to be an official adult. Especially as I said, I was their biggest rescue. Grandpa, thank you for allowing me to be your nurse. It was an honor to come in every day. Good morning, Mr. Coleman. How you doing? <laughs> I've had my good memories, and unfortunately, these last few months have been some bad ones. But uh, it's an honor to be your nurse and your granddaughter. And thank you for everything you've always done for me. And Grandma, I love you so much. Are there any more? We got time for two or three more. All right. I scared the rest of you off, didn't I? Yeah. But we're grateful for the words that you've shared and the memories that you've shared. And it's my prayer that every memory that you have of him would be an encouragement for you to live the type of life that he lived. Amen. With his origin rooted in Christ. Amen. Amen. We're now going to have a selection by Dwayne Roberts, and we're going to come, and he's going to share with us safe in his arms.
Oh, I'm sorry. My help comes from the Lord. Amen. Bless you. Forever, I'm going up. 
song in a long time. Amen. And a good song will do you good every time. Amen. Yeah. I'm going to ask that uh, my wife, Sister Andrew George Clark, will come and read the obituary. After the reading, we're going to have a video and following that, so I don't have to get up anymore. We're going to have Sister Latanya Boston to come and sing the last selection. Yes, you were in Brother Coleman's presence. You just felt like lifted up. It was it, when I talked to him and I would leave, I just felt like that. You know, it was a breath of fresh air. Mm. And he had all these cute terms. I didn't hear anybody talking about his rider boys. Mm. <laughs> you his rider boys? You say, Sister Paul, I tell you, the rider boys. It won't leave you alone. That was an authorized to see God. So, you know, you're supposed to feel sorry for him because it was it was very painful. Yeah. But the way he referred to it, you know, he just couldn't help. But he had to smile. <laughs> I remember my husband and I went to visit him in the hospital the last time he was in the hospital. You're not supposed to have that much fun in the hospital. <laughs> <laughs> just for not. And he just had us laughing. His nephew was there with Sister Coleman. And we just had a good time. Amen. You know, didn't know you had to visit someone who was ill. Um, he and I, we found out, like persimmons. There's a tree that hangs over the fence there. And one day he and I were over there. Let's just say we were perusing the persimmons. And the owners stealing. next door, they saw us out there, and they handed us a bag of persimmons. That's not going to happen anymore because I was told they died and their children live there now and they come over on this side now and pick the person. So uh, I guess they don't know that when it hands on your side, that's yours. <laughs> but anyway, the last thing I'm going to say is Brother Coleman, he calls Sister Clark, Sister Clark, let me get the right sound. But he also called me by my nickname or pet name, as he said in Jamaica, when I was a child. And I don't know how he knew that, because my name is Andrea. Typically, people say Andy or Andre. But he was like, Angie, you know? I am like, how did he know that? So that kind of made him closer to my heart, because it, he was bringing back you know, childhood memories. But I will miss him. You know, whenever I call him, he, you know, everybody said he had a story, or he had just a unique way of, of talking.
to Oliver Coleman Sr. and Janet Coleman. He was the second of 13 children born to this union. Leonard attended New Bethany Baptist Church, where he accepted Christ at an early age. As a second son of a farmer, Leonard completed his formal education after finishing the sixth grade. He remained a farmer until he was 18 years of age. After farming, he later enjoyed gardening and fishing. When I would call him, he would also say that, yeah, I was working in the garden. So, and I'd say, I thought you had your rider boys. How can you be? But he found a way, he found a way. Leonard had aspirations beyond farming. And in 1951, at the age of 18, he headed west to Northern California. Upon arriving in Northern California, his father's sisters, Mrs. Hattie Mae Glover and Miss Vietney Huff, welcomed him into their homes. Although Leonard left the farm, the strong worth ethic, ethic and sense of integrity he developed while farming stayed with him. After one year of not finding enough work, Leonard headed to Southern California in 1952 to work with his cousin Timothy, AKA Buck, doing general labor in the construction industry. Leonard was never afraid of hard work and continued to thrive working as a butcher, a medical assistant, and many other short-term jobs. He eventually became a welder for Smith Tool and worked in this field for more than 13 years. Leonard met the love of his life, Miss Dora Pryor, in 1954 and in 1955, Leonard and Dora were married. To this union, four children were born. Family was the most important thing to Leonard. He loved his family and taught us the importance and value of all family members. Leonard was preceded in death by his parents, Oliver Coleman Sr. and Jenny Coleman, brothers Ernest Coleman, James Coleman, and Oliver Coleman Jr. Sisters, Dorothy Coleman and Doris Coleman. Daughters, Eva, Be Eva Day and Regina Coleman. Son, Roderick Coleman. Granddaughter, Stephanie Day. And great-granddaughter, Markeela Day. He leaves to cherish his memories, his wife, Dora Coleman. Daughter, Wanda Coleman. Son, Swanson Col Coleman Sen Sr. Brothers, Emmett, Arthur, Joe Willie and Larry, sisters Betty, Jimmy, and Jenny, five grandchildren, Robert, Rashad, Swanson Jr., Joy, and Oriana, and six great-grandchildren, Corbin, Zoe, Sage, Josie, Xavier, and Skyla. Please excuse me if I mispronounce any names. Leonard touched the hearts of countless people. Although he has gone home to our Father in heaven, his legacy will live on among all who knew him. His faith and can-do attitude gave him the ability to succeed. His sixth grade education did not stop him. Racism did not stop him. Nothing stopped him from succeeding. From living with relatives to owning two homes and providing for his family, Leonard was always a victor and never a victim. Today, we celebrate Leonard's life, and we give thanks to God for giving us his most precious son for 92 years to love us, teach us, and show us how to overcome. Amen. And the poem that's in the middle of your program, Miss Me But Let Me Go. When I come to the end of the road, and the sun has set for me. I want no rights in a gloom-filled room. Why cry for a soul set free? Miss me a little, but not too long, and not with your head bowed low. Remember the love that we once shared. Miss me, but let me go. For this is a journey we all must take, and each must go alone. It's all a part of the master's plan, a step on the road to home. When you are lonely and sick at heart, go to the friends we know and bury your sorrows in doing good deeds. Miss me and let me go. God bless you.
Charlie, do it again. <laughs> you can do it. You can do it. Come on, mamas. Do it. Nothing to it but do it to it. <laughs> Whoops. There, she made it. She made it. <laughs> oh, go, mamas. You made it again. Yeah. Birthday, Papa. Good, you gonna be crawling in a minute. <laughs> she is. She's trying to. Yeah. Good job. Hold on, Charlie. Hold on.
Okay. You give Papa hugs? No, no, no. I don't care. I don't care. Don't, don't, don't care. Don't care for Charlie's hug. She gave you kisses instead. <laughs> bang, bang, bang. Oh, I like the shoe. You're pretty green and white, huh?
all let the church say amen. 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 God has been faithful. Yes. And God has been good. Amen. amen. Can anybody witness to that today? Amen. Y'all fooling me. Amen. Y'all know you respond when people are good to you. I'm just going to be like, tell you like Elizabeth Taylor, when she said to her seventh husband, I won't keep you long. Say hello, somebody. Amen. Amen. Now I, I know they wrote they put this thing in the Bible. Where is it? Oh. Amen. I'll be there in a second. There it is. It's a privilege to be able to stand before you this morning and and talk about my friend. Heavenly Father, as we approach your throne this morning, we just thank you for your grace. We thank you for your goodness. We thank you for your present help because we are definitely in a time of need. We just pray, Lord, that you would just speak to my heart, to my spirit, and let me say, what you have me to say. And for that, we will give you the praise, the glory, and the honor for it in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Linwood Coleman, my friend, I said I was going to do that. And my brother, we had a name for him here at church. When he would come down the aisle on Sunday morning, he would be dressed to the nine. All right. All right. Had his hat in his hand. Walk down the aisle and wave at somebody over here and wave at somebody over there. And old Mary Howard said, look at Hollywood. Amen. Yeah. And he just, it, that just tickled him. But you're probably wondering why I got this suit on today. I woke up this morning, you know, and I would pull out old black and had my black and white tie and my white shirt and I was in my funeral regalia, but something just said, dress to honor him today. And so I went and got one of my Linwood suits, amen. Yeah. Yeah. And I just put it on in honor of Linwood Coleman, amen. Right. Right. We, had a, we, had a, we had a unique relationship. I remember when we first, when I first came here and he would come to church, we'd talk, and then he said, yeah, I, I, I'm one of your members. Man, you ain't no member of this church. What you talking? He says, yes, I am. I said, you ain't no member of this church. When, when did you come down the aisle and shake the preacher's hand and let him know? That? He said, now, let me tell you something here. I don't call everybody pastor. <laughs> All right. <laughs> so if I'm calling you pastor, yes, then I'm your member. I said, okay, then we, 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 we need to make it official then. But we had a unique relationship. He was a country boy, and I was a country boy. And when they trained us in seminary to go to visit the sick and to go visit the shut-in, you're not supposed to be there any longer than 20 minutes because, you know, you want to be, 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 be understanding of their situation. And I would ride down to Huntington Beach and 
pull up at the Coleman's and had my 20 minutes in my mind. Then about six hours later, <laughs> I remember I, I, I've been here too long, amen? And we would compare those farming stories and those early stories and our lives were similar in some ways in terms of our rearing and we, we traded stories and we just would laugh and talk. And, but he was a man and he was a man of God. I don't want you to get that twisted. He was a man of God and he was a man of God in his unique way. Right. And I tell you when he talked about those rider boys and the days seemed to be getting kind of shady on him. Boy, you let one of those great grands walk into the house. He would grin from ear to ear and he would just light up, look like somebody took a light uh, switch and just turned them on. Yes. He loved his family. He loved his children and he loved his grandchildren. And he loved those great grands. And they, I mean, I think they were something that really just gave him a shot in the arm, amen? Because he was really energized with them. And um, my friend and I would just, we would just sit and talk. And I would feel so bad because I believe Wanda was saying, it's time for you to go, Pastor Clark. We ain't got no play for you, so, so you need to go. But Anyway, but it, it was uh, it, we 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 had some good times, and we had a we had a unique relationship that I'm grateful to God for. Linwood was a man's man, but he was also a gentleman. And as my wife said earlier, you couldn't leave there without him telling a joke. Even if it wasn't funny, he would get to the end and <laughs> and and if you didn't catch it, he'd say, "Hello, somebody," <laughs> and, and and you know that, that that was time to laugh. But uh, Pastor Jones, I acknowledge him today that that, that is here with us today. I I decided to pay him back because every time I go to a funeral of his church, he just put me on the spot. Yep. Pray scripture. Okay. So today is your day, Pastor Jones. Amen. And um, but I remember that I was there and I was having remarked at um, Mrs. Coleman's mother's funeral, and um, and I said uh, across the pulpit, I said, and I married those two. They were married about 54, 55 years at that time. And one of the members, I mean, she was looking at me and she was trying to figure out, well, are you married them? Yeah, I married them. So she came up to me afterwards. She says, did you really marry them? I said, yes, I did. She said, and how old are you? And I told her at that time, and she said, but so you were two years old when you married them? All right, all right. I said, no, ma'am. I, 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 let, let me be honest with you. At their 50th anniversary, I married them again, amen? Yeah, yeah. But uh, it was in humor and she took me serious. But to my friend Linwood and to the Coleman family, thank you for lending me him at these times, amen? What well, they did not know that, that there were times that I would, 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 would be down in the dumps and I called Linwood, because you know what? By the time I finished talking with him, I was ready to go again, amen? And what people didn't know, even people here at New Spirit didn't know, he had his ministry to the church. He was one of those silent soldiers, amen? I started getting cards for my birthday and anniversaries, and if I was a little sick or something, get a get well, I'm like, who are these cards coming from? Linwood was home. He had the churches list of folks and every birthday, every anniversary, every uh, Christmas, every uh, 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 whatever the day that we celebrate. He would send cards out to the membership, the get well cards and everything. And that was his ministry. He didn't, he didn't come down here as a deacon and 
doing his splits and, you know, singing his solos, but but he came, you know. And at home, he was ministering to the people of God. Amen. Amen. And he read his Bible. I would go over sometimes and he would have the Bible open that he read something. And he would never ask me a question directly about the scripture. He said, Reverend, I just read this and I, I, I was thinking, and what do you think? And we would share, he said, oh, well, that, 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 that's good, that's good. Because I was thinking the same thing, amen. But the scripture has been read, and I know we, we're, gonna, we're gonna try to put this in a timely, timely frame here. And I'm just gonna read one verse that out, of, out of the three that was read. He says, I have fought the good fight. I have finished the race. I have kept the faith. As I spoke with Linwood towards the end of his life, the only thing I can say to you about Linwood, he knew what time it was. He knew what time it was. I didn't say he knew the time, All right. All right. but he knew what time it was because no man knows the time That's right. That's right. but God himself. But he knew what time it was. Every time I go, he said, well, Pastor, you know, we all got to go that way. But he said something to me the last time I spoke with him over the phone that I didn't catch. He said, it's time to prepare to go that way. And I didn't think about that until after his passing. And I remember saying, yeah, it's time to prepare to go that way. And, and, and just in, I, I, I'm not going to try to preach no sermon and make y'all shout or anything, but I do want you to understand that time is a coming from the words of Linwood Coleman, we all must go that way. Amen. Yes, all of us have a day that we're going to literally face God for ourselves. Our names will be called and death will have the permission to take us on. Yeah. But I'm so glad that as in the words of Jesus, he says, who that believeth in me shall what never die yeah. so death for the christian is not really death as we know it it's not separation from god right as much as it is a graduation into his presence all amen right. all right your time here is spent and and god calls you on home to be with himself yeah and that's why Paul was able to write, to be absent from this body is to be present with the Lord. Yeah. Now, now, you might not get that. You may not understand that because you may think that that, that that can happen for me. But if you have not come to the place yes. that you put your faith in the Son of God so that the plan of God and the promises of God would be yours, then it's just something you heard and maybe even something that you talk about. But when he called your name, it doesn't necessarily mean your absence is going to be in the presence of God. All right. All right. When God breathed his life into man, man became a living soul. Yeah. And guess what? We are God like in our existence, in the breath, in the spirit in which he placed in us. And all of us going to spend eternity somewhere in his presence. Oh, let me just say like the old preacher said, are you going to go to hell? All right. Amen. Right. And can I say something to you? God, ain't, God has never sent anybody to hell. Right. He, that's not his thing. He's he not sending anybody. But he gives you the opportunity yes. Yes. to literally make a choice that's as to where 
you will spend eternity. Now, we're, we're looking at the Apostle Paul this morning. Paul had lived a good life. Paul started out as a Pharisee, and he was literally killing Christians. Yes. But on the Damascus Road, he met Jesus for himself. Amen turned his life around, and Paul ended up writing a third of the New Testament. That's what we're talking about. Amen. Paul literally plant churches all throughout Asia Minor. He plant churches all over the place. Yes. Paul says, look, as he began to write to Timothy, Nero had already said, take his head off. Right. And the sentence had been passed. So Paul is writing to Timothy saying, look, the time of my departure is at hand. I'm already been poured out as a drink offering. Timothy, what you need to know that I'm okay with that. Yeah. Why? Because I have fought the good fight. Yeah. Yeah. I have finished my race. Yeah. I've kept the faith. Paul uses uses three different terms here. Two are athletic and one is military. Yes. That's one of a Greek wrestler, a Greek runner, and a military man at the end of his career. Yes. He says, I have fought the good fight. Yes. Some of you have never had a fight. What Paul was referring to is that Sin that we were born in, and iniquity, and and, and and we were born in iniquity and conceived in sin. He says, "I had to fight that all my life." Yes, yes. I came to a place that I met Christ, and you know what? I gave up the fight because it was His now. But He says, "I fought the good fight. I did what was necessary to live the life that God." called and purposed me to live. Yes. That's what Linwood Coleman did. If you are here today and you still trying to philosophize about what it means to be saved and, and what it means, is there a God and all that, you, you're going to find out one day. Yes. But Paul is here speaking presently of past uh, experiences. He says, I have fought. Passion, the good fight. I know what I had to go through yes. to get to this place. You heard Paul in Romans says, look, when I wanted to do good, yes. evil was always present. You know, and, and so he, he literally had to fight to be the apostle that God had called him to be. And this Christian life ain't no, ain't no, ain't no joke, y'all. No, it really isn't. Amen. Because we're living here filled with the Spirit of God and the, with the presence of Christ in our lives, but yet still, there's a world against us yes. simply because of what you believe. Amen. Paul had to fight to do the will of God. And the word wrestler here is talking about someone wrestling and, 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 and literally having to, you, you know what it is to wrestle. I ain't going into all yeah. that. Yeah. But then he go, he says, look, but not only have I, uh, my, I, I won over my challenges, Linwood won over his challenges. He shared with me his, his, his growing up. He shared with me some of the things that he suffered with but they were never anything to stop him right. from being the man of God that God called him to be. Amen. Yes. Yes. Everything wasn't rosy for Linwood. I mean, Leonard, Lin, Linward. Amen. And, uh, but not only did he fight a good fight, but he, what he finished the race. Y'all yes. yes. do know that sometimes you have to outrun in this right. But he has the idea of someone who has been on the course of life and had been running just to have life. Right. Realizing that in all of his running, he had come to the place that he has won the race. He had met the goal. Yes. 
Y'all know when they come in in the Olympics and everybody run and they come down and they give them the fly, flag and they put it all across their shoulder and they walk around. And, and, but, but, but really, they're waiting for the stand where that they can go and receive their goal. That's right. In these last days of limit, he knew what time it was. He was satisfied. Yeah. And so he could tell me, Pastor, it's time to start preparing to leave here. And when Mrs. Coleman would call or Wanda would call and tell me about him and what he was going through, and then, I, and then I began to understand that he's already made up his mind. They say he's just sleeping. Yep, he, he's already made up his mind. He knows what time it is. Yeah. The sad thing about it is, is that some of us don't know what time it is. All right, all right, sir. If you don't get a relationship with Christ yes, sir. and get right with Father God, Right. And guess what? You, you really don't know what time it is. Because of his relationship with God. We don't say bye, bye, Linwood. We say, see you later. Because the same God that you serve is the God that I serve. Right. The same God that wouldn't let you die eternally is the same God that I serve. And I'm here this morning to say it's time out to keep playing with the Lord. Yeah. There were too many people that went through too much for us as people today to literally say, well, you know, they, they're old timey and they don't know that. Let me tell you something. Let me tell you something. Those old country folks went to church. And you, you might be able to stand as Dr. Dr. Jones would tell you and, and say, they didn't know a whole lot about a lot of things that we know now, but you know what? They knew what they knew and they did what they did because they wanted their children and their children's children to know that there was, there was, there was, that you, you could serve a true and a living God. Amen. Amen. And they passed their faith along. But we have so many distractions in the world today. We think these old folks are crazy. Going down there to that church and giving that man your money and all that. You, 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 better, you better stop that. Man. You don't know what time it is. Because your name is going to be called one day. Yes, and if you were to talk to Linwood Coleman, he didn't want heaven for himself only he wanted it for all of us but the last one is talking about a military term he says look i have finished no i i have kept the faith like i said paul wrote a third of the new testament what god said to him that's what he said in the book Paul was at the beginning of Christianity and everything was against it. And Paul had to literally in that time fight philosophers. He had to fight the Roman, the Romans philosophers, and he had to fight the, 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 the Greek philosophers. And he had to fight uh, uh, with, with other folks that call themselves Christians. Yeah. He had to fight the Gnostics. He had to fight the Judaizers. Amen. He had to literally stand up in their presence and say what thus saith the Lord. Yes. And as you can see from Nero's pronouncement, that could get your head cut off. Amen. Amen. Linwood Coleman, in his own unique way, knew God for himself. Yes. And he didn't have to flaunt it. Give him five minutes and you will know it. Hello, somebody. <laughs> and I'm here today. I want to celebrate his life for who he was. This, this, this soldier who had pitched his tent years ago. Yes. 
and he had literally put, put his tent there and he was living in that tent. And then he realized that it was time for his discharge. Right. And he realized that that tent was not going to serve him anymore. So he had to literally break that tent down because it was time for him to be discharged. That's right. That's right. This old body that he was in was his tent. Mm -hmm. That's what he lived for 92 years. And he began to see it break down, and he realized that his time, it was time for his discharge. Yeah. Reverend, it's time to start preparing. Because every one of us got to go this way. Right. And I believe that's the message that he has left for all of us today is that we need to get ready because all of us are going this way. Yeah. He knew what time it was. Do you know what time it was? Know what time it is? I'm gonna tell you what time it is. It's time to put your faith in Christ yes, sir. so that you, you can be saved. I, I, I forgot these mortuaries are standing at the door. That's supposed to be a sign to me. I need to get this thing over with. That's, that's what's right. Amen. Y'all yeah, yeah, need to do some signs or something, you know. Because right. cause I'll, be, I'll be here till tomorrow. Because right. this is my friend Linwood. Amen. But, 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 but we, we, we make it so difficult. We want God to answer all our questions before we literally are related to him. All right. I don't tell everybody my business. Mm -hmm. And God doesn't either unless you are related to him. Yes. See, how, how did that happen? See, but as many as re uh, received him, to them gave you the power to become yes. the sons of God. As many as believed on his name. Yes. Y'all yes. say, well, how do you do that? It's easy. You just confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart that God has raised him from the dead. Who is him? Yeah. Mary's baby. Yeah. Who is him? The one who walked the face of the earth and lived a sinless life. Yes. Who is him? The one who died a criminal's death. Right. Who is him? The one who was raised on the third day with all power in his hand. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Who is him? And guess what? Paul says with a military term, you shall be saved. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Don't make it difficult. Because one day, it will be your time. Don't take it for granted. You need to know what time it is. Yes. Linwood did, and I hope you do too. Heavenly Father, we are grateful for this family and friends who have gathered together to say farewell. We know, Lord, that you are the God who literally orchestrates life. And Lord, you pilot us through these times of bereavement. Yes. So your presence is greatly appreciated. We thank you for your love, Lord, that is there in that absent place in their heart yes. to fill it with your presence, to comfort them, Lord, and to be compassionate towards them, Lord, and to see to it and strengthen them, Lord, as they go through all that bereavement means. Father, we just pray that every memory of Linwood would serve to be encouragement to them to cons always consider the time. And this we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. We're going to ask that everybody stand, please. And I'm going to ask that the family would, 
would follow the procession. I'm going to ask Reverend Jones if he would lead them out, and I will, I will read as he leads them out. Get to heaven, what a day of rejoicing that will be. When we all see Jesus, we will sing and shout the victory. When we all get to heaven, what a day of rejoicing that will be. When we all see Jesus, we will sing and shout the victory. When we all get to heaven, what a day of rejoicing that will be. When we all see Jesus, we will sing and shout the victory. Oh, when we all get to heaven, what a day of rejoicing that will be. When we all see Jesus, we will sing and shout the victory. Jesus says, I am the resurrection and the life. He that believeth in me, though he were dead, yet shall he live. And whosoever liveth and believeth in me shall never die. I know that my Redeemer liveth, and that he shall stand upon the earth. And I shall see God whom I shall see for myself. Mine eyes shall behold and not another. We brought nothing into this world and it is certain that we can carry nothing out. The Lord gave and the Lord has taken away. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Jesus, we will sing and shout the victory. Oh, when we all get to heaven, what a day of rejoicing that will be. When we all see Jesus, we will sing and shout the victory. When we all get to heaven, what a day of rejoicing that will be. When we all see Jesus, we will sing and shout the victory. Oh, when we all get to heaven, what a day of rejoicing that will be. When we all see Jesus, we will sing and shout the victory. When we all 